Did you know you can grow your own mulch, a living mulch, right directly under the trees that need it? This is such an important thing to be thinking of, particularly now when everything is getting hotter and drier. There's so many different plants that you can use as a living mulch, but there's one I want to show you today, which is just going absolutely brilliantly here underneath my food forest terrace. So why use a living mulch? Well, one, they help to suppress weeds, they help to retain water, they help to protect the soil life from the sun beating down. It's cheaper than importing mulch from outside and you get the added benefit of it being living and helping to create the living soil structure and lots of bees and pollinators so that you're adding to the whole ecosystem. Hi, it's Morag Gamble from Our Permaculture Life, a project of the Permaculture Education Institute. I wonder if you knew we also have a whole lot of online courses and resources available for you. Check out the card on this page to find out more. So what's this living mulch that I've got here that's attracting so many bees? I don't know if you can hear the buzzing of the bees. This is nasturtium. Nasturtium is actually a plant from South America. It was prized by the ancient Incas as a leafy green and a medicinal plant as well. I don't know if you can hear that, but there is a buzzing around me. It is attracting so many bees into this garden. It's phenomenal. I've just been away for about a month traveling and teaching and I've come back and the nasturtiums are coming over the wall. So that's no worries at all. They're so easy just to chop and drop and put into another section of garden or add them into the compost or feed them to the chickens or eat them myself. I want to tell you soon about all the different ways that you can eat this plant. Nasturtiums got their name from the Latin meaning nose twister because if any of you have ever been around nasturtiums before, if you crush their leaves, and it's quite a peppery smell. So it was one of the very first plants that was ever taken from the New World to European gardens and it became a popular plant in European flower gardens. The thing is though, it got known as a flower but I think a lot of people forgot that every single part of it is edible and medicinal. So which parts of it are edible? Well, the leaves, you can eat the young leaves and these larger leaves you can even use as a wrap. You can put filling in, wrap it up and put a little stick in there or you can add the leaves as anything that you would, uh, any leafy green. You can cook it up or you can use it as a salad green. The flowers themselves are all entirely edible, fantastic, both as a garnish. There's a beautiful garnish in salad, but entirely edible as well. And really peppery flavor. They're so delicious. And they come in the most magnificent colors. I love that they are so orange and yellow and there's reds and there's blacks and pinks and whites there's so many different colors but I actually really like to choose and self-seed around my garden the orange and the yellow ones I just love the color the brightness the happiness of these colors and in fact I've actually used these colors as inspiration for the paint color on my house I have some orange walls and some yellow walls because I really wanted to bring that color from the garden into the color in my house another part that you can eat is these little seed pods here, so otherwise known as a nasturtium caper. When they're green like this, you can actually make capers, you can pickle them. One of the things I really love about this plant is you don't have to have good soil to start. So even if your site is really quite disastrous, you can get nasturtium going and it helps to get your system activated. So it helps to cover the soil, it helps to feed the soil, it attracts beneficial insects, it protects the roots of the plants that you have around, provides you with food. And in actual fact, you tend to get more flowers when the soil is, is rougher and you actually actually don't need to do too much to the plants once you've got them started. Give them a little bit of water when you're getting started then after that they should be able to take off by themselves. Now how do you actually get a nasturtium started? You can either get some seeds from a friend that have dried and look like this all wrinkled up <laughs> or you can get them uh, from a store. Or the other thing that you can do is actually just take a cutting off one of the existing plants if you find someone who's got some or you've got one yourself and you want to spread it into many places just a little section like this and you can plant that into the ground and you'll get another one going really quickly so even if you just got one plant you can make many incredibly fast so particularly when you're getting a new garden started or you notice that some 
area that's got quite a lot of bare soil, you can get it covered super fast. Now in this particular garden behind me, I'm actually really trying to build up the soil naturally with what I've got here. So underneath the nasturtiums, there are a lot of um, banana stalks that have been chopped and dropped, and that's gonna be feeding the soil. Then tumbling over the top of that, we've got the nasturtiums. And what's gonna be going on underneath is not only we feeding the soil life, but there's lots of little habitat spaces for lots of lizards and all other things that are creeping around and helping to activate this whole area. So what are all the different things that you can use? I mentioned you can eat the leaves and the flowers and you can uh, eat the seeds but you can also make a pesto from the leaves, you can add it into soups, you can make a tea. Actually making a tea from any single part of the plant is really good for coughs and colds so part of that medicinal value of this plant. There's something else that you might not know about nasturtium is that from the dried seed pods, these ones here, the little ring dry brown ones you can dry roast them in the oven and then grind them and you have your own pepper so for so many reasons from its value to protect your soil to help your other plants grow to reduce your dependence on water to feed the soil to feed yourself as a medicine to support the the bees and the pollinators that are in your garden and also to support the things that come into your garden that help to peck off aphids so it attracts hoverflies too all these different reasons, I think nasturtium is an absolutely fantastic living mulch. And there's so many different sorts of living mulch plants that you can grow in and around your garden. And I encourage you to experiment and play. I hope you go out and try living mulches. And I wonder too, what living mulches you grow in your garden. It'd be great to get your comments down below. I look forward to your company in the next video. Leave me a note if you've got something you'd love me to make a film about too. Take care, see you next time.